One evening, my friend and I decided to visit a strange place we had read about online. The story described a man who, while driving to some new quarries, took a wrong turn and ended up in the middle of a forest. There, he claimed to have heard eerie, mystical sounds, like the sound of a heavy downpour when it wasn't actually raining. But the most intriguing part was when he mentioned finding an old gate deep in the woods. When he returned the next day, the gate was gone. Given our odd hobby of exploring mysterious places, we decided we had to see it for ourselves. Of course, we had to go at night. Any other time just wouldn't have the same effect. Our GPS wasn't working properly. Something was off about it. After about 30 minutes of driving aimlessly, we somehow knew we were headed in the right direction. I'll say this up front. I didn't like what we found. Usually, our trips to these so-called haunted places end up being disappointments. We often find nothing but abandoned buildings, sometimes with stray dogs, drunks, or just empty, desolate spaces. But the thrill and the feeling of someone or something watching us is what we were after. It's usually just the spooky atmosphere and the darkness playing tricks on our minds. But not this time. Ahead on the old road, we saw a gate. There was no fence, no wall, just an old, tall, rusty gate standing in the middle of the forest. We got out of the car and approached the gate. For a moment, I thought about turning back, but curiosity got the better of me. The forest surrounded us, and the narrow path ahead kept getting smaller. Eventually, we couldn't drive any further, so I stopped the car. When we stepped out, we heard a strange sound. It was like a heavy downpour, but there was no rain. Everything was eerily similar to the story that had brought us here. We decided to go back to the gate to inspect it more closely, so we turned around. I was sure we had driven straight the whole time, with no turns. There hadn't even been any place to turn. But the gate was gone. It had just vanished. And there was nothing where it should have been. This time, fear outweighed curiosity. Without getting out of the car to investigate, we decided to head back to the city. I had to rely on instinct to choose the direction, so I turned right, somehow certain it was the correct way. We had been driving for about ten minutes when the forest started to fade, and the road grew worse. A dense fog surrounded us, so thick I could only see about five meters ahead. I had to stop and get out. A growing sense of panic started to take over, getting stronger and stronger. But we needed to move forward to find a way out. After a couple of minutes, we found ourselves in the middle of an old village. In the center was a huge well, surrounded by ancient, almost crumbling houses. In one of the houses, a light was on. We approached it and saw a sign that read store. Inside, there was no one, but I noticed the items on the counter. Andre, I broke the silence. Salt costs five kopecks. Look, condensed milk, 55 kopecks. This is insane. There were other items like juice for 72 kopecks, cigarettes for 70 kopecks, and kvass for 36 kopecks, all brands we'd never heard of. Let's get out of here. Andre said, and we left the store. Everything was quiet. I looked around the village. In the window of a distant house, a candle was lit, and after about twenty seconds, it went out. No one said a word, but we all started to back away. Then, a candle lit up in another house, and then another. What is this madness? I whispered fear creeping into my voice. Suddenly, we saw a silhouette in the distance. Someone was walking towards us, holding a candle. We began to retreat faster, but the figure sped up too. Then, with a sudden burst of speed, they ran toward us, shouting something unintelligible. We jumped into the car, spun around, and sped off. To our relief, we saw the gate ahead, the same gate. Terrified, I got out and opened it. 
Just as the gate was almost out of sight in the rearview mirror, I saw someone standing next to it, holding a candle. I'll never forget that terrifying drive. But the scariest part? When we tried to return later, we found nothing. No gate, no village, nothing. There was no mention of the village anywhere, and it didn't appear on any maps. After that experience, our fascination with visiting strange places vanished for good.